Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be recommending some romance books to y'all. <laughs> So today I'm going to be recommending eight books that have some form of disability or illness represented in them. I know some people are sensitive to the word disability, but as someone who has a disability, I have a disability. I'm fine with saying that I have a disability. Having a disability or saying that I have a disability does not make me feel any less than another person. I don't think it's a negative term. I have a disability. That's me personally. If you're offended by the word disability, I'm very sorry, but as someone who has a disability, I'm cool with it. <laughs> it does not offend me at all. I have a disability called POTS, Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome. Um, you could Google it if you want to know the details of it. I have a very abnormal heart rate. It is higher than the norm, so I'm very prone to fainting, uh, just chronic fatigue, chronic headaches. I'm still praying and waiting for the day that my disability shows up in a book because that would be freaking fantastic. Also before the video starts I just want to say preface saying I do not have any of these disabilities, illnesses, visual or internal impairments. I don't know if they're 100% accurate or 100% represented well. If you think one of these books or some of these books are not represented well just comment down below, let me know, I will know, uh, let, to let other people know too. If you think they're represented well, also comment down below, just let me know. I'm not saying that all of these books are represented 100% accurately, but I'm just here to tell y'all that there are these um, disabilities or illnesses or impairments in these books and if they want to read about something that they've never read about before, I'm here to provide. <laughs> so, forewarning, I'm not saying that these are accurate. I cannot speak for myself and say that they are. Here is just some representations for y'all and a little bit of diversity when it comes to disabilities for y'all. But anyway, I'm here to talk about some books that have disabilities in them. Some of these disabilities you can physically see, some of them you cannot. So I think there's a wide range of disabilities on this list. There's also a group of illnesses in this video. Um, like heart conditions and stuff like that. So that will also be in this video. There's actually nine books on this list. I forgot to put one of them on my list. So let's get that one out of the way. On the Way to You by Candy Steiner. Now I am just now getting into Candy Steiner's books and I am in love with her books, needless to say. So this book is a romance book between Cooper and Emery. And Cooper, she actually lost part of her leg when she was in a car accident when she was a child I believe and she decides to go on a road trip unexpectedly with this guy named Embry. She works at a diner and she's been planning to go on this trip to Washington for as long as she can remember to try to go to college there because her home life is horrible. So Emery one day walks into the diner that she works at. They start up a little conversation. She realizes that he is literally on a road trip to Washington right now and he asks her to go with him even though they don't know each other at all. And at first she's like, uh, no, you're a stranger. I'm not gonna go <laughs> on a road trip with a stranger. But then once she starts to think about it, she realizes this may be the only shot that she has to actually get there in a way that she could afford. <laughs> um, and it doesn't hurt that the guy that she's traveling with is uh, uh, pretty good looking. <laughs> Another uh, representation that you could add to this book is that Emery suffers from depression and that is very much touched upon in this book so beware going into this if that is a trigger for you. But I really enjoyed this book and this one is also an audible escape if you have audible escape. So the thing that I really loved about this book is that Cooper did not talk about her leg being gone. Like, it, like she talked about it but like she didn't make it a big thing. Like she's like this is me. I don't have to tell somebody that I don't have part of my leg. Like, why would I? She's just really strong and I like that about her. I like how she doesn't deal with anyone's crap when it comes to her disability. The next book that I have for y'all is actually a historical romance. This one is called A Notorious Vow by Joanna Shoup. And this is the third book in the 400 series, but you don't have to read them in order. I just only listened to this one. I listened to this one through Libby. I only read this one. I didn't read any of the ones before and I don't think those characters pop up in this book. I loved this book so much. This one is about Lady Christina and Oliver 
and they are kind of forced into a marriage of convenience. Oliver is actually deaf and Lady Christina suffers from anxiety. More specifically, I believe social anxiety. So if you want to see those representations, I think they're done pretty well in this book. You see a lot of ASL in this book and Oliver teaching Christina ASL and I really enjoyed that because I've been wanting to learn ASL and know a little bit. I really 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 enjoyed that part of the book. So basically this is about Lady Christina. Her parents are horrible people. They are from England and they travel to America to find a husband for Christina so they can get married and her husband can give them money to pay off debts that they have in England. Um, so they're not really there for Christina's happiness they just want money so when they travel to america they're actually staying in christina's cousin's house um her aunt's house and next door is oliver and oliver has these amazing gardens that christina loves to escape to when she's feeling anxious and overwhelmed and one day he catches her in his garden and he asks what she's doing there this is his house this is his property she shouldn't be here but all in all, they start developing a friendship even though Oliver is very hesitant because he's been judged in the past for being deaf. Uh, so he's very distant when it comes to relationships with any person of any kind. And they kind of are forced into a marriage of convenience and you'll figure out why when you read the book. But I loved this. I loved Christina and Oliver's relationship. I read this literally like two days ago and I'm in love. I just, I want more about Christina and Oliver. Next we have one of my favorites of all time. We have Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I read this book, I believe in January and can't stop thinking about it. This romance is between Chloe and Red. Chloe has moved into an apartment and Red is her superintendent or landlord. Chloe's disability or illness is she has fibromyalgia, which is a chronic illness. And I have, a, my illness is a chronic illness. So I loved that representation and I saw a lot of myself in Chloe. So I loved that and I thought the representation was spot on. I personally don't have fibromyalgia, but my disorder is very much similar to Chloe's. So I felt a lot for Chloe in this book. So basically because Chloe has this illness she's kind of lived a sheltered life and doesn't really get out very often because she's kind of been scared and her family's been scared for her but then one day she has like kind of a near-death experience almost gets run over by a car don't worry i'm not spoiling this happens on like the first page and she decides that she wants to get a life and so she's made a get a life list and there is a list of things kind of like a bucket list that she really wants to do to get a life like ride a motorcycle or have a great time out at night with her friends and red her superintendent kind of gets roped in into helping her complete this list and through this whole process they may end up developing feelings for each other even though it's kind of a little bit of a dislike or hate to love i love this a lot out of any of the books on this list this is the one that i recommend the most probably because i don't see a lot of book with chronic illness representation i feel like that needs to be represented more and talked about more next we have archer's voice by mia sheridan this one is also another audible escape listen so if you have an audible escape here you go this one is about brie and she moves to a small town in maine and there she meets archer who is kind of the town recluse and kind of the town outcast archer was in an accident with his parents and he was the only survivor from the accident. And from that, he is not able to speak anymore. Something happened to um, his vocal cords to where he is not able to speak anymore. And because of this, the town has kind of outcasted him and he's kind of like the Boo Radley of the town. But when Brie moves to the town, she meets Archer and they develop this friendship. And from this friendship, it grows to something more. Archer is very, very, very innocent because he doesn't know a lot of things going on in the world. I really liked how I got to see like a man have a little bit of a more um, innocent nature to them. I really enjoyed that aspect to it. There's ASL in this book. I love how uh, Brie really takes the time to communicate and get to know Archer and put in the time to spend time with him because he doesn't really have anyone. I really recommend this one as well. Next we have Stay With Me by Mila Gray. This is the second book in the Come Back To Me series. Uh, you don't need to read them in order, but maybe would add to the story if you did because you meet Dee Dee, our female main character in the first book. I think you'd be fine reading this as a solo book. I would categorize this more as a new adult than a full on adult romance. So Dee Dee starts working at a military hospital because I believe she wants to become a nurse if I'm not mistaken or a physical therapist. I'm not 100% sure it's been a while since I've read this book. There she meets Noel who's a wounded Marine. This hospital is for um, wounded military 
individuals. Noel is there because I believe was in a uh, blast that left him blind. So uh, he is visually impaired. He cannot see. So I really enjoyed this because Noel is very gruff and abrasive, but rightly so because he just lost his vision and he, he has to let out his anger. You know what I mean? Throughout the book, he becomes more caring and um, really starts developing feelings for Dee Dee without even seeing her. I love that. I want to read more books that have more visual impairment in them. So if you have any recommendations, please leave them down below for me because um, I really want to read more about that too. This one I think is a great starter book for romance. If you're not really into romance, this one is a little bit more on the tamer side on this list. Next we have The Vixen and the Vet by Katie Regnery. Now this book isn't one of my favorites on the list. I think, I believe I gave this one three stars, but this does have some sort of disability or impairment in the book. This book is about Savannah and Asher and Asher is missing a hand and half of his face is uh, disfigured because he was in an IED explosion in Afghanistan. Asher is the Boo Radley of this town. He moves to this town one day and doesn't leave his house ever and no one knows why. It's a very small town so everyone wants to meet this new person but for years he's never left his house and they don't know why. And then Savannah comes back in town I believe from work. I don't remember specifically but she comes back to her hometown because I believe she lived in New York and she comes back. I believe she's a journalist. She's been asked to write kind of like a monumental um, story and she believes that Asher could be that monumental story and so she goes over to his house and kind of like convinces him to be the subject for her story. This is very Beauty and the Beast-esque I would say it is a Beauty and the Beast retelling somewhat. I read this book a while ago, so the details are kind of fuzzy for me, but I did like the representation and how, yes, um, Asher was uh, very hesitant and um, kind of closed off when it came to people in general because he's been made fun of and he has been hurt in the past because of what he looks like. Through this book, he's he's realized that he's more than his disability and what he looks like on the outside. So I really liked that part of the book. Next we have The Year We Fell Down by Serena Bowen. This one I would categorize as a new adult book. This one takes place in college. This one is about Corey and Adam. Corey used to play hockey, but due to an accident, she is now in a wheelchair. And then there's Adam who also plays hockey, but his impairment is temporary because he broke his leg only whereas Corey's is kind of more long term of an injury and they meet by being in the handicapped dorm at their uh, college. Uh, Corey is a freshman. I believe Adam is maybe a, a junior or a senior. I don't remember. I really liked how I got to see a new representation. I think this is one of the first books that I read where there was a character who was physically impaired when it came to walking. So I liked seeing that aspect in the book because uh, it was something I'd never read about previously. Corey goes through a lot of struggles in this book of realizing that she is now forever changed because of something that happened to her, but it doesn't have to be negative. It can be a positive in some ways, but she has to go through a lot mentally and physically for her to realize that. Um, and Adam helps her a little bit in that and really helping her realize that a person can like you and a person can be your friend no matter if you're in a wheelchair or not. Next we have one some of you may not expect. We have Ruckus by LJ Shen. I wasn't expecting there to be a representation in this LJ Shen book because I read Vicious, which is the first book in this Centers of Saint series. When I found out that one character had cystic fibrosis, I was like, ooh, I've never read a book about a character that had cystic fibrosis. I'm very intrigued. And turns out the second book was about the girl who had cystic fibrosis. So this book is about Rosie and it takes place many years after the first book, Vicious. Rosie has cystic fibrosis. You see some of it in the first book, but I think you delve a little bit more into it in the second one. I wish we did see more though. I wish there was more about the cystic fibrosis in this book. We had some talk about the cystic fibrosis in this book, but I do wish there was more. If you're wanting a book with that representation in it, it has that representation, but I believe it could have been addressed a little bit more or talked about a little bit more. So fair warning going into it. The other main character here is Dean. And in high school, Dean dated Rosie's sister, but Rosie and Dean have always actually had a crush on each other. Uh, and this is years later and I believe they live in the same building now when they're older and it's their relationship kind of like a hate to love because Rosie's still like 
a little bit pissed about Dean dating her sister instead of her. And the last book on this list is Within These Walls by J.L. Berg. This book is about Jude and Lila, and Lila was born with a severe heart defect. I don't have the book physically on me because I'm in isolation right now due to the virus and I'm not allowed to leave my apartment to get the book to read what the actual name of the condition is, but she does have a severe heart condition that she was born with and she spent her life in and out of hospitals. This one's more in the new adult range because I believe they're college age but Lila is in the hospital and there she meets Jude who is a night nurse who just got transferred to her section of the hospital and there they start up a friendship and Jude's going through a lot. Uh, years ago his fiance died in the hospital that he's currently working at so he's trying to keep her memory alive but also try to move past it at the same time. And through this, through his friendship with Lila, he starts to realize that he needs to um, accept his grief, but also let it go in some sense, to move on in some sense. It's very interesting learning about all the medical uh, aspects and terms that go along with something that Lila has and figuring out what she has to go through because she's been through a lot ever since she was a child and it's kind of really scary to read about because she's not guaranteed to live you know um, because her condition is so severe I really enjoyed this and really recommend it if you're kind of in for a little bit of a tearjerker but also a great friends to lovers story so there you have it those are some romance books that have some disability representation or illness representation in them again I do not have any of these disabilities or illnesses or impairments so I don't 100% know if they are 100% accurate or represented well so uh, if you know if they're represented well or not please comment down below let other people know when they watch this video I am on the track to reading more books that have representation in them so stay tuned for later on in the year when I make another one of these because I am probably going to but uh, anyways thank you all so much for watching I will see you all soon in the next one bye Thank you.